Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. Welcome to TCB Podcast. Hey man, it's it's good to be on again, Brad. It's been a little while, maybe two years, I reckon, since last time I was on the podcast. I know, what a throwback. I mean, I can't believe where I was when I met you uh, like two years ago and we did this experience and then I was actually in Australia, which is crazy. And then, yeah. um, and then where we are today, both different people. But um, let's, let's get into it. I mean, this is going to be one of the more, um, to kind of, kind of give people or listeners, you know, a little context. Of, we're going to go back to a little bit more of the flow that we usually have with TCP today. And that means sure. I'm going to have you share a little bit about who you are as a doctor and uh, as a person, as a man first. And then we're going to get into the conversation of, uh, you know, the struggle that we've had and also the things that you've learned and how we can actually help other doctors as well. Yeah, sweet, man. Sounds good. Can't wait. Cool. So why don't you go ahead and share a little bit about you? Cool, man. So, uh, yeah, for those who don't know me, I'm down in Australia. I've been in practice now for, uh, this is my eighth year in practice. So, um, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a veteran by any means, but, um, you know, it's, it's not my first rodeo, uh, either. So it's been a massive freaking learning curve as you can, uh, as you, as you know, uh, in chiropractic and it's been a, a beautiful learning curve. Um, so I've been, I actually bought my first practice before I even graduated. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've never enjoyed having a boss. So, uh, I sort of went and did that in a small country town in Victoria for about nine months and then realized I wanted to be near the beach man. And, um, so a, an awesome job came up in the Gold Coast here in Australia. And if anyone's been to the Gold Coast, it's like what you picture when you think of Australia, it's just like golden sandy beaches everywhere. Uh, and it just stretches on for, you know, hundreds of kilometers and it's just, yeah, it's phenomenal. I love to surf. And when I was in uni, I was like, man, I would love to work with professional surfers. That would just be epic. And, uh, the position that I was going for, um, Dr. Matt Butel here in the Gold Coast, he was pretty much one of the first, uh, practitioners to work with surfers back 25 years ago. And, uh, for those who don't know, chiropractic, uh, was the first basically modality, not that I, man, I hate calling it chiropractic modality, but um, uh, to be involved with surfing. So, you know, they didn't even have massage therapists back then. It was chiropractic and Dr. Chris Prosser uh, was up here as well. And um, he's still the, uh, I haven't spoken to him for about a year or so, but um, uh, he, he wrote the, the medical um, policies for what was the ASP, um, which is now WSL for the world surfing tour which basically in the policy now has that chiropractor has to be at every single world tour event which is just like so ahead of any other sports um you know going back 20 something years ago so uh i thought that was just epic and uh, so i started working on some of the the local surf comps here and um you know i got to work with the billabong junior world uh titles that was really cool and um still still to this day i've uh worked on uh, or worked with a number of um you know top athletes in, in the field. So that was cool, but I was still in like a really pain based type model. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't get really introduced to chiropractic, uh, until about second year out. And, um, you know, I was having struggles just as, uh, working in a mechanically based, uh, model as people, uh, could realize, you know, that, that sucks that kind of model. So, and, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I was wondering why people didn't understand chiropractic and it was because I didn't understand chiropractic and uh, a good friend of mine introduced me to a, a clinic called bonfire and they were doing just phenomenal things. They'd combined hot yoga with chiropractic and it was open plan. I heard the, you know, these numbers of a hundred and 150 people a day coming through and I'm just like, what the hell man, I'm seeing like five, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And so, man, that took me, took me there and, um, yeah, I just learned from some, some really amazing mentors and spent three years, um, you know, immersed in that, that practice. They had uh, three or four of those clinics at the time. And I sort of 
moved around and um, just got, you know, just got an understanding of what chiropractic really is and started reading the green books and just got, yeah, I just got wrapped up in a man. I was like, holy shit. Like, I, I can't believe I went through university without knowing this. And, but that was how it was meant to be. That was my journey. So, yeah. um, you know, once I started understanding the philosophy, I really realized that, um, you know, chiropractic really chose me. And, uh, as you can resonate, you know, we don't choose chiropractic. And so, uh, after about three years working with those guys and just learning heaps, I was, uh, my wife was pregnant at the time and, uh, I was like, you know what I needed, I need to go out and do this on my own. And, um, yeah, joined, joined forces with a good friend of mine. And, um, we just, you know, we just put our heads down and, uh, we wanted to create a, a practice that, you know, no one had ever seen before. You know, we wanted to create a, a practice that was world-class, you know, and, and that's, you know, that, that's what we set out to do. And uh, if anyone's been into the practice, you know, um, you know, I'm pretty, pretty proud of where it is, uh, you know, where we got it to and where it is today. And, uh, you know, I think anyone who has been in through there and anyone's invited to come check it out, you know, I think world-class is definitely something that um, people would agree with because uh, it's you know it's a it's a it's a phenomenal place and um you know i went through some struggles like i think a lot of people do in chiropractic um you know and just i mean anyone but uh, big struggles with my family and um you know where i was as a person and as a man and uh about two years ago and um you know it it, it all started to build up we'd opened up our second practice and wow yeah and you know like Although I was loving, loving what I was doing in our, in our practice, I was always trying to chase, like, I guess, more and bigger and um, having this concept that, you know, we need, you know, we need 100 practices like that or to be, to be happy or to be successful. And, you know, I really, I really understand now that I was, I was chasing uh, someone else's version of what success was. Um, so even though I was having success in my practice, it was, you know, I guess not, not enough, um, mm. which I think is the trap that we can, we can get into. And, um, you know, I really started to just uh, be putting on, I guess, more on my plate and stacking too much. And we'd created a raw chiropractic seminar and I was doing the podcast and I was doing online marketing coaching for people. And I'd had a lot of success with, you know, online marketing myself with, um, Facebook and you know I'd, I'd be pretty confident that I was the first person in Australia at least to be running Facebook advertising so I started doing that with other docs and you know it's just I was not spending you know time and energy where it needed to be which was you know working on myself you know my health wasn't as good um, you know my relationship was starting to have struggles and you know for people who are listening who are married I was coming into you know I think probably seven years into our marriage and uh, we'd fallen pregnant with our second child and we had two practices running and you know what it's like Edwin, you know, you just, you got so much shit going on externally. Uh, and then, you know, if you're not working, you know, on your internal self, like it's just, it's a, it's a freaking uphill battle. Yeah. And you know, I was, I was not coping I was using uh, coping mechanisms that, you know, weren't really constructive. And pretty much at the end of 2016, bro, I was done. Like, you know, we just put in, uh, we're renovating our house and we just put in this beautiful big pool. And, you know, it was, it was, that was sort of like at the time I was like, okay, um, we actually decided we we're going to sell this, the second practice we opened. And, and then at the time, um, you know, we got this pool finished and I was just like, oh, we just need to get this finished, get this finished. And we'd sold the practice so that relieved some stress and put the, put the pool in bro. And, and then I was like, everything was sort of done. We'd sort of go rid of the second practice, which, you know, I was saying, well, that was, you know, that was the problem over here. And then, okay, now the pool was done. That took bloody six months and you know, it cost an extra $30,000 and, and then once all this stress that I'd sort of had built up, that that was the problem in, you know, my own internal battles and my relationship with my wife and my relationship with my kids. And then I was like, holy shit, but I, I still, I still don't feel right. <laughs> I still, I still feel shit. And, um, you know, man, like that was, that was, that was heartbreaking and, uh, some, some serious stuff happened and it was basically like, I got to go and, 
I had to, I literally had to walk out of my own home, had to walk out of my, you know, my family, leave my kids, leave my wife. Cause I was just at that point bro. I was, I was done. I was just, I looking back now, I was completely adrenally fatigued. Mm. I was, you know, my wife and I had gotten, you know, you know, from stuff that was going on with her and me, we were just, you know, in this relationship that just, we'd lost all the, the passion, you know, and I know now that the love was still there because we've got, we're, we're back together better than ever. And uh, we've just got the most beautiful relationship. But at the time I was like, okay, we're done, you know, and literally it was, that, that was the conversation. And, wow. um, you know, we, we were fortunate enough. Um, unlike I think most people, I mean, most of the chiropractors I know have been divorced at least once. Um, and for us, we were able to find that again. But at the time, I was really just like, we're, like, we're done. So, you know, I was living out of home for six, six months. And, um, and then fortunately, I was in a position that I had a, a really good friend who just sold his practice. And uh, I needed a break from chiropractic. You know, it was going on seven years. And, you know, if it's funny, if you look at every other pra- profession, you know, most people have a long service leave, long service leave after seven years. But you know, man, I don't know any chiropractor who takes more than a couple of weeks off typically out of their practice. And um, I was in a position, luckily, because I'd set up a really nice online business that was doing, you know, like over six figures um, that I could go, hey, I'm going to put a locum in and take the time that I need to reconnect with myself first. So, you know, it took me off to the Himalayas through South wow. America um, you know, trekking and, you know, just really trying to find where the hell that I went wrong and, uh, trying to find my way back to my heart and just get back in alignment and, you know, really try and figure out what really mattered in this world. Um, which, you know, now I really feel that, you know, I'm, I'm on that path and it's a continual journey every day, as you know, but I know you've had, you know, your, your own struggles, man. And you, you know, you've found different, different avenues, but you know, for me, it was, you know, just reconnecting with myself and finding meditation was probably the, the biggest life changing thing that uh, had happened to me. Um, and, you know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm back now. I'm back in practice mm-hmm. after four months out and, you know, I'm on fire, man. I love, like, I, I love my practice. I, I go in there, I do two days a week. We just see heaps of people, just love everyone up. Um, and you know, the rest of the time, man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing my online nutrition business, you know, and that doesn't take up a great deal of time. Um, and then it's just, it's family time, bro. And, you know, I just, I, I love it. We were doing a process the other day and they were, they were walking us through. It was actually Tony Robbins' son, uh, in, uh, Kentucky just last week. And so I'd flown over there and he was taking us through a process of your ideal day and, Dude, I was just thinking of my ideal day and it was just like what I do every day at home, you know, just waking up and, you know, my wife being next to me and then my young daughter, my oldest daughter coming in and waking us up and then our second daughter waking up and going downstairs and having a coffee and hitting the beach. And I was like, man, how, how do I just make sure that I can sell my life that I can just keep doing, you know, what, what I'm doing now and like, how, how can I get more? And I was sort of at a point where I was thinking, okay, well, how do I you know, how do I just keep doing what I'm doing now? And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. You know, universal <laughs> law doesn't allow you just to keep doing what you're doing. You know, that, that ends up being stagnation. And then I was sort of in my head a little bit about thinking, well, you know, do I, is it, is there something wrong with wanting more of that? You know, is that the same trap I was in? But then I was like, you know what? No, like I fucking want more love and I want more joy and I want more family time. I have so much family time, but I want more family time. You know, yeah. I've been blessed, been able to travel so much in the last, you know, 18 months, but man, I want more travel. Like there's nothing wrong with that. I want more time freedom, more, you know, I want more of the real stuff. I want more love and depth and intimacy in my life. Like, mm. uh, and I'm just going to keep going down that path and, and, and just going deeper and deeper into those things that really matter in life. And yeah, man, like we, we need money to be able to do that. I need, you what? know, so like, yeah, it's this funny thing. And, um, you know, I, I, for the first time in 2017, the start of the year, I wrote my goal list out and, um, you know, I had all these, normally I have all these things and it's all just business stuff. You know, I want to see this amount of patients and I want to have this amount of clinics and I want to have this amount of businesses happening. And for the first time, I just wrote all these things that it was travel and it was intimacy and it was the relationships. Mm. And then I looked at it, I was like, oh, shit, I didn't put any money down here. I'm going to need some way to fund this. So I'm like, well, I just wrote down at the bottom. And it was like, it was the, the largest amount of money that I'd ever asked the universe for 
in you know the, all the times that I've been doing goal setting, like for the last you know probably six or seven years. And I just wrote down the bottom. I'm like, oh, well, I better write that down. And literally, the, you know, that's what came. You know, I made more money last year than I ever had in my whole life. And I didn't have to focus on all the stuff. I was just like, cool, I want to focus on the stuff that actually matters. Yeah. And I oh, yeah, sweet, I better, I better ask for, you know, the money that's going to be required to you know, fulfill, fulfill my dreams in, for the year. So, and it provided, man. So, you know, that, that's my focus now. It's just focusing on the, the shit that actually matters and, yeah. um, you know, re- really listening to my, my, my heart and my body more, which, you know, I'd, I'd forgotten. I was just so for such a long time, just fast tracked. And, and you, to be honest, you sort of need to like, to a certain extent, focus on some of that stuff, you know, when you're trying to build and you're getting a family, you're starting to practice, but now I'm just so much more aware of myself and where my, you know, where I'm at um, yeah. internally that yeah. I can, you know, if I feel like I'm getting a little bit off track that I can just come back and center and take some time out and meditate or do what I need to do to come back to center. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of the things that I've learned and, and that I've actually learned with clients now is that we have to start by looking at first, what, what is it that we want? Cause like I've had this before and I did this too. Is like, so yeah, I, I started and created a new business, right? Like, you know, in, in terms of like, I, I'm obsessed with helping doctors create online businesses and, you know, hit seven figures. But you know, like you don't want to create a business that you don't love, right? Like you don't want to, you know, if it doesn't fill your soul, then why do it? It doesn't, you know, I mean, and I was, I I mean, almost probably not even six to seven months ago, Trent, I was like, I was going, it was kind of like you with the extra clinics. It was like, okay, I just got to keep building things and doing this and, and adding more things in, uh, where it was really less like, you have to step back and just go like, what is it that I want? And, get clear on what is your, what, what does your dream day look like? I love that exercise by the way. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Now how do I, how do I manifest and manifest or how do I earn right? That, that money to, to the cash flow to actually make this happen. So it's almost like starting with the end in mind. So let me ask you this question. I mean, you know, there's probably lots of docs listening right now and they totally get it. I mean, like I get your story. I was like, I noticed I was kind of like leading in more and more <laughs> as you were talking because I'm like, I totally get it. And so what would you say to a doc right now who's kind of listening to your story and it's, they're, they're, they're feeling the vibe, um, but they're feeling also like they're stuck you know, like they're stuck in that same kind of grind like you were in. What was the, what was the thing that kind of just like clicked for you that you just, or that you could tell them right now and just could hopefully make that difference and shift for them? Yeah. Well, I mean, for, for me, man, the universe punched me in the fucking face and I was like, I was, I was on the ground and sort of like looking up and going, oh shit. Okay. Like I, I can either stay down or I can like get up somehow. And so mm-hmm. Hopefully, if, if docs are listening to this, that they don't have to get to that level. But, um, you know, so I was sort of forced into to making change, which uh, can make you change pretty quickly and, and um, you know, forces you to look at yourself, like, pretty deeply, right? Like, when, you know, when you've sort of lost everything, mm. uh, and, you know, I know you're like, man, you, you know, you, you've been in that boat where financially and with your health that, you know, you've, you've been at the, the bottom. Mm-hmm. And um, it makes you reassess everything in, in your life. You know, it, make, it makes you literally question your entire existence as a human being here on the planet. Um, but I guess the, the, the pivotal thing for me, or what I've sort of learned from the experience is that instead of focusing on, um, you know, instead of focusing on what you need to do, you know, we, I was talking to a group of docs up in the sunny coast the other day, and, you know, we've got the, the, the be, do, have thing. And, you know, we're, we're so focused on, you know, what that be, do, have thing is sort of like, okay, cool. If I be this person, I'm going to then automatically do this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still to get this shit over here, right? Like it's still to get the stuff. Like, oh, I want to have that Tesla. I want to have that Porsche. I want to have that whatever. So I'm just going to like be this person over here who's going to do this person, but you're still trying to be something that you're not because the only person that you are is who you are. And so for me, it's more about trying to just strip back the, the bullshit that's it. That's in front of you, the veil that, you know, the mask that you wear. And I mean, to do that, man, you got to go back to like childhood stuff. Like you got to, you got to, 
look at look at your uh, relationship with your mom, with your dad, like you know. And and if you've got kids, you're going to be able to see that because basically your your kids are there to you know basically test you, like right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're they're there to test literally uh, you to the nth degree to show you basically you know. I don't like to say what's missing, um, you know, in terms of where you haven't grown quite yet spiritually and consciously. Um, and if we aren't aware of that, we can get pissed off with our kids and all relationships are like that. They just really mirror everything that we, um, you know, that we need to understand about ourselves. And so it'll either mirror for us um, stuff that we don't like about ourselves. So that's why a lot of, you know, we meet someone and they, you know, really irk us the wrong way. It's mm. often because they're basically mirroring behaviors and patterns that we do that That's we don't it. actually like about ourselves. And then we try and use our relationships as well. And, um, you know, I think probably in chiropractic, you know, we've, we've, we've got relationships coming at us all the time. And so, you know, we're in the relationship game. Um, but then with our, you know, our spouse and our, in our romantic relationships, we're often looking for our romantic relationships to provide the love to us that we won't even provide to ourselves. It's like, Oh, you know, I was talking to to my wife about this last night, you know, in a relationship, it'll often be like, Oh, you know, baby, you know, I don't feel like, you know, you make, you know, you you say that I'm sexy enough or, you know, I don't feel like, you know, you just come and and give me a hug just like spontaneously. And it's like, well, do you do that to yourself? You know, do you come Mm. into your own heart space and like give yourself a hug and say, Hey man, you know, I love you. Like you look at yourself in the mirror, but we're seeking that from our, external spouse you know what we wouldn't even do for ourselves so for me it was all about starting there it's about like really finding out who i am as a person like where i feel that i'm lacking i guess in a sense Mm -hmm. and you know where i where i'm not loving myself as much and so going back and and having a look and just reading into you know different spiritual practices and you know when you when you look at all the different spiritual practices and religion they're all saying the same thing and you know it's it's all about just unconditional love and compassion for yourself and once you have that then you know you can give that to everyone else Mm. because you're not you're not trying to get or gain anything from anyone else and i think that in itself um goes and you make better decisions that way because you know you're not trying to seek any validation from anyone so i think when we're on the wheel of chasing success you know, often that comes down that you never felt that you, you know, your parents were either proud of you, your mom or your dad, and you, you didn't feel that validation from your parents that, you know, you were doing a good enough job or whatever. So you start seeking that from the external world to, oh, well, if I have this amount of the bank account, that means that I've done a good job, you know, and it, it sounds so simple, but, you know, and if you're a parent and you sort of understand a bit more, you can do your best to try and negate that. But I think it's just part of the human gro- growth that, you know, we need to understand that about ourselves, that we are a, a pure, we're pure unconditional love. And mm. um, when you have that feeling about yourself, you don't need external validation. You know, you don't need your parents to say, yeah, you know, you're now free and I'm proud of what you're doing and you go seek the world. But a lot of people don't have that and a lot of people don't get that validation from their parents. So they're literally still trying to, you know, they're going through life in their 40s, 50s and 60s and they're still trying to seek external validation from, you know, basically because they didn't feel that they got that from their parents. And so checking back in that and going, hey, what, what was my relationship with my mom and my dad? And do I really feel that my parents are proud of me? And do I, do I really feel that I've got my parents' permission to go out and into the world? Or, you know, as a small baby and it's a bit hard to, there's other practices that you can do. But if you know you had a parent that, you know, left you, you know, before you even met your dad or, or whatever, you're going to carry around this sense of abandonment for your entire life. And then that's going to project into everything that you did. Um, and so you're going to be needy. You're going to be fearful that everything is going to be taken from you. So maybe you've built up a lot of wealth, but you're going to be really scared that it's going to lose, you know, you're going to lose it because you're literally, you know, these conditions have been ingrained in you and you haven't had that. So you need to go back and and check in with yourself and and do the work that's required to heal some of these problems. And um, I think there's really fast track ways to do it. Um, Some of the, I guess, the healings that I went through, I found through traveling and, um, you know, Buddhist meditations and other forms of meditations and and tapping deep into that. And, um, you know, 
things like uh, sacred sexuality practices are massive. You know, the correlation between sex and you know what we understand about sex and basically the physical world um, is a is a fast track way. If you can heal the problems and the issues that we have about sex, uh, you're going to heal most of your problems in your life because we grow up, you know you know, with this concept that nudity is bad. And, you know, before we even actually reach sexual age, we have this entire concept around what sex actually is or what it isn't, you know, if it's good or if it's bad, what you can do, what you shouldn't do. And so there's a, so much guilt and shame around that whole topic that and that's before we even start. And so that, I think looking at your parents, you know, your mum and your dad relationship, and then looking at, you know, your belief systems around sex, are two really fast ways that you can get into it. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a, a group of people called the ISTA, uh, which is the International School of Temple Arts. And I think the work that they do, um, you know, and that type of practice is massive. Um, other practices that I've done um, have involved things like ayahuasca in Peru um, and other, you know, plant medicines that have been around for, you know, hundreds and thousands of years um, that can really tap into some of this stuff that's just, you know, ingrained in our psyche that, um, you know, if you, if you listen to Tim Ferriss or Joe Rogan, mm, yeah. uh, a, lot of, a lot of these guys have, have been talking about psilocybin mushrooms. And, um, you know, I think yeah, this is probably not the, the direction that the conversation <laughs> planned to went, but, you know, but, it, but I'm serious, you know, for docs that are stuck, like some of these, you know, you can, you can wait till it all falls apart and then you're going to be forced by the universe to either like crawl into a gutter or like somehow like crawl out and climb a mountain, which is yeah. what I did. Um, and then find this stuff. But, you know, you can literally, um, you know, you can fast track your way back to more centered you. So if you feel mm -hmm. like you're out of center and, you know, our bodies are really designed to, it's their compass. Like if, if you're feeling that agitated or anxious, if you can't just like sit back and relax you don't take a breath and be super comfortable with where you are right now. If you're like, Shit, you know, I got to get this done and you're constantly stuck in your head. You feel like you're running out of time. That's your body trying to tell you, man, you're like, you're off center. Like what did, what did BJ Palmer say? You know, life is an expression of tone. So if you think of a tuning fork, you know, you hit the tuning fork and then you, you know, you strum the guitar string and you're trying to get those tones to resonate at the same frequency. So and you can feel it. You can energetically feel that those strings come in and you know what it is. That's what your body's there to do. So when you're in flow and you're in connection with, you know, your true, you know, your true self and, you know, a higher source, whether you want to call that God or universal intelligence, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But when you're in that, you know, sense of oneness and center, you feel good. You know, your body feels relaxed. Like, you know, we should be in a sense of peace and joy and calmness um, when we're in, when we're in flow and we're in center. So I think that's probably the first thing to go, well, it's like, well, do, how do I feel right now? Like, do I feel good or do I feel shitty? Do I feel like I'm waking up stressed? Do I feel like I'm constantly thinking out here rather than thinking right now? And that's the first understanding that, okay, maybe I need to do some practices that are going to bring me back into alignment because you can't make good decisions about what you want to do in the future set goals or whatever, or like, you know, what, even like, what, what do all my ideal day to look like is going to be different if you're not in tune and you're not in flow. Yeah. So, but yeah, tuning in, I think with uh, trying to get back more centered in whichever practices that you want to do with that. And then just looking about what does actually really matter in life. And, mm. and for me, I, I could say, you know, my family, obviously, you know, my, my, um, my relationship with myself, my relationship with others, you know, and then what am I really enjoying? I was like, man, I love, I love chiropractic. I love being in practice yeah. and, you know, but you know, I don't want to be, I was, you know, when I had two practices, I was working like five days a week. And I want to work two days a week. I love that. I love, I love seeing lots of people. I like being you know, busy in practice. I love seeing families. And, you know, at the time as well, probably, you know, actually we, you've been doing about the same time, you know, I got involved with prove it nearly two years ago. So, um, you know, online exogenous ketones, like, man, that, that, sh that shit. when I was looking, I was like, man, that actually saved my life. Like having that secondary business allowed me to actually take time out of my practice and to be able to, you know, reconnect with myself. And, mm. you know, not only that, like, you know, and you've seen it as well, like the, 
amount of um, impact having that has made on other people from a financial point of view, but from a health point of view was phenomenal. I was like, yeah, I want to keep doing that. You know, that's, that's important to me that this is important work Mm -hmm. and it allows me to reach a a whole different and reach more people outside of my four walls. So I really, once I got more center, I just looked at everything I was doing. I was like, I don't anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Hey man, I love my practice. I want to work in there two days a week. Let's get an associate in there as well. So he can, you know, let's build him up there. So we've got that, you know, a little bit of extra um, uh, flow of income as well coming from there. It allows me more time. So if I want to take a holiday, because before it was Scotty and I, but you know, we're working big days to be honest. And when he goes on holidays, I don't want to pick up the slack. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> let's get an associate in there prove it like do i want to keep doing that fuck yeah i want to keep doing that you know like this is something that impacts people's lives so so much it allows me to incorporate you know health and nutrition in such an easy way into my practice and it allows me to connect with people worldwide and just get phenomenal changes like i get messages and, and photos i see every day of like you know people who had you know, signs of diabetes. We can't obviously make any medical claims, but people who had diabetes who now go to their doctor and the doctor says, oh man, you don't have any signs of diabetes anymore. You know, that's a big impact. And chiropractic is, you know, the number one, it's my, my number one focus, but to be able to have a nutritional business that makes a good amount of income on the side where I know that if something went down where I couldn't practice, where I you know, I, I got sick or something, something happened. I got sued for whatever reason that I have a backup plan that it's not a backup plan in terms of money in the bank or a backup plan of like, I've got some investment properties. I've got a backup plan that actually resonates exactly with my philosophy Yeah, um, that I can, I can still continue to do and love and teach health and wellness and make a big impact on people's lives. But at the same time, getting financially rewarded. So prove it for me was one of those things that, yeah, man, that's staying in the basket. So, now my focus is chiropractic and prove it, you know, and I do chiropractic two days a week. I probably do prove it, you know, maybe not even half a day a week total. And, uh, you know, they're making both great income and I get to spend the rest of the time with my family. And yeah, man. So I think that for, for cars that are struggling, you just got to get, first you got to get centered with yourself, check in. Am I, am I, am I back centered? Am I in a position now where I can make good decisions because you know when it's like when you're running on the treadmill and you're like yeah cool i'm making this decision this decision you know they're typically the wrong decisions you know <laughs> but, when, but when you're calm and when you're relaxed you can and, and you're centered and you're, you're loving and you're coming from a place of love you can make decisions and look at your life and go you know what's really important for me what do i enjoy what's profitable as well if you're in a business uh and so that's what i would really recommend first is people get connected with themselves and to be honest for them to do that you got to free some time up. Like, you know, I know docs have, you know, never taken more than a week off in you know, 15 years. And that's just, that's just crazy, man. Like, even if you don't right now have the financial freedom or, or, or position to take the time off, dude, you've got to make the time. Like, you know, you, if you haven't taken time off in you know, the last six months, that's costing you money. Like any, any time I take a week, two weeks off, I come back, I've got new ideas, fresh ideas. Like, you know, the, the money I've, yeah. you know, lost and you re- resonate with this. I'm sure the money that it has cost me to take the holiday, I'll make back tenfold in the next three months. I remember being in, uh, we were in Maui and you know, you get those notifications that it says you have, you received, you received money in your wallet. <laughs> And it was basically, I re, I'm sitting, uh, cause I don't really monitor that closely. You know, Karen handles more of the, the prove it stuff too, for like the, you know, the back end and stuff. And I get this text. It's like, Oh, I basically paid for the entire vacation, like 10 days of vacation in Maui for myself and my family. It's done. So it is yeah. like, that's, that's one of the things that I wrote down is it's, it really does come down to, well, knowing what you want. Um, and that comes down to what I found with a lot of doctors is it's time freedom. Like it's such a cliche, but it is time, freedom, money, and impact. Like if you want to help more people. So I, I did it. I did that Facebook live or I did a Facebook live and it would have been about a year ago around this time. And I remember sitting in my wife's car, like her, her mini SUV and doing this, this, this Facebook live on, um, some, I can't even remember why I'm joining um, 
the prove it or ketones, even though I, I didn't, I said I would never do something like that. And, and, and it really came down to two things. And it was number one was like, I tried it and it, like, I get some, you know, most people know my story. I get some major GI stuff going on. So if I can find something that I can take, right, that I can actually consume and it actually keeps me um, mentally, you know, in the ball, game, like in the game for the, for the day. Cause I can't, I typically, I won't be able to eat all day, but also, I mean, in terms of like, it didn't cause any challenges with my, my with my digestion. Um, and then once, once that was, and then Karen, by the way, cause it was, it's a funny story. Cause I told, I'm like, okay, Karen, I think, I, I think, I, I don't know if I ever told the story, but I basically walked by our, her office at our home, Trent, and I go, because I was like, okay, I'm all in now, right, with, with, with Prove It. And I would look in the door and I'm just like, oh, just by the way, you're going to see uh, I joined uh, Prove It and, <laughs> and this is a new business I'm doing. And she was like, what? So we went to war for about 24 hours. And then she, but until she tried it and she was like, oh my God. And if anyone has followed Karen over the last year, like since she's been using Prove It and she started boxing at the same time, like she's ripped. She's, she's 49 and she's in the best shape she's ever been. Like look at a picture of Karen a year ago and look at a picture of her today. And she's like, she looks younger. Like it's crazy, Trent. Yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, and, and, it and, and, and my wife's got the same story, man. And like yeah. a, a big part of our relationship or well, the majority of our relationship. And my wife's the first person to say this is that she never felt sexy, you know, she never felt comfortable in her own skin. And she, you know, she never had felt like, a, you know, that she felt sexy to her husband. And obviously then that, that comes out in all sorts of ways, yeah. you know, same deal, man. My, you know, my wife's in the best shape she's ever been in the freaking life. Like she's like, yeah, she's got rock solid abs, happier. like happier <laughs> skin. Like I'm happy. Yes. Happier. Yeah. I mean, for, for anything, for the, for the, the, the male docs that are watching, you know, really one of the big reasons you should join Prove It Man is so you, you know, get your family on this stuff. And like, <laughs> I don't go any further than that, but, but seriously, like the, the, the impact that it has on, on people's physical bodies, which then can, you know, impose physical appearances and that kind of thing. But man, it makes a big difference, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but, um, you know, I'm the same, man. I just, I freaking love the product and I'd spend, uh, last week in Kentucky at uh, Keto Academy and more and prove it specifically, man. They, I mean, their philosophy is so in line with chiropractic. They, they use the same words. They use innate. They use native, you know, our native state because ketosis is, you know, it's like chiropractic. You know, the body is meant to, uh, the body is meant to be subluxation free. And neurologically, if, you know, where if we have subluxation, our body doesn't work well. So you remove the subluxation, the body works better with ketosis the body is meant to go into ketosis so if it's not going to ketosis there's something wrong so it's not a treatment for anything it helps your body get back to its natural state and it's as simple as incorporating that into your practices you literally have it next to your visuals like a lot of people get too tied down with i don't have time to do like another business but the beauty is that it's you literally you stick the stuff next to your fish oil your probiotics it's not it's it's not rocket science and the way that it's set up in terms of the business model, hey, if it's working for you, you like it, why don't you tell a buddy? Or, you know, why don't you tell, you know, someone on the other side of the, the planet that, hey, if you're seeing this stuff, you send them your website and boom, you, you never know who they're going to tell. Next minute you've got, you know, six-figure income because you've told five people, right? Because that's just how it works. You know, I've got a, a lady, she's, you know, basically, uh, well, she is, she's like one of my, my largest business builders in the team. And she's like my best mate's ex-wife's ex-best friend that he told. And now she's like, you know, on the other side of the country and she's just got this massive prover business. And, you know, she makes me like a huge check like each month. And like, I only met her, you know, only fairly recently. It's like, who's this chick? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't, because I told my best mate, you know, you never know who he's going to tell. And so that's the beauty of it. If you like the, if you like the product, if you like the concept, then yeah, get involved and st start stocking in your clinic, start giving out, you know, samples yeah. to your patients, get people to try it and see the results. Like, you know, we've, we've had people with autoimmune problems, you know, diabetes, you know, people dropping 30, 40 kilos. 
as simple as, hey, put this in your water and drink it. And because ketosis has such a big effect on the body, the trickle down effect health wise is just phenomenal. Yeah. And from a business wise, same deal. You never know because of this, the, the way that the business model is set up, you never know who the person you tell is going to tell. Um, and, and so I just think that the business itself is just phenomenal, but the product and the company is so in resonance with chiropractic philosophy. It's, it's just unbelievable. Their pursuit, their, their whole slo- logo or slogan, I guess, is the pursuit for better. Mm. You know, it's about human optimization. We've got people from NASA over at Kiddo Academy talking to us. We've got um, people, you know, who are literally reversing diabetes through keto programs. Um, you know, they're putting huge amounts of money into the research. And so I just think that, you know, it is something that's so easily incorporated into chiropractic and it's enjoyable. We run uh, monthly keto workshops where we just go through, you know, 30 minute presentation about basically, you know, whole clean food and then incorporating the keto diet or keto lifestyle into it. And then the supplementation side of things in it. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many new patients we get coming through because of that, those workshops. Like there's, there's people doing this all over the town. And if you're a doctor listening to this, you can be the expert. Not that you even need to be a big expert, just, you know, eat real food and, you know, cut down some carbs and drink some ketones uh, is pretty much all you need to know. And the company has got enough experts and resources and research in, in, in the website and everything that's involved where you can just put it on there, invite people along, give it, you know, the eat well, move well uh, workshop or just an eat well workshop. And then, Hey, this is some of the products that I personally take and we recommend. And it's as simple as that. And and when you become that person in your community, there's literally hundreds of people right now in your community who are doing this, that that are involved with prove it, that love the product. You know what? If you say, Hey, uh, I'm, I'm Dr. Trent. I'm running a keto workshop next, next week. And you put that on Facebook, you're going to have the entire Prove It community like coming to your clinic and going, yeah, man, and they're going to be bringing their friends because they want to adopt it to basically <laughs> third part validate what you're doing or what they're recommending. And so it's unbelievable. Like we've, we've got, you know, literally like just in the last few months of running these workshops every month, you know, we're talking like dozens and dozens of new patients from, just running these these workshops with keto, so it's that side of things is pretty cool. I think it's just such an easy um, add on to what most docs are already doing. Yeah, and from a secondary business um, point of view, it's phenomenal because it's not time sensitive. You know, it doesn't take me any time for Shannon, who's my best friend's ex wife's ex best friend, <laughs> to go for her to go do a workshop in Mackay. I'm not even there. I don't have anything to do with it. Yet yeah, someone's in the background in my team working down underneath me. Um, not that I like to say underneath me, but you know, working for the business and making me income that can then you know potentially pay for my Maui trip. Yeah, I mean that's the crazy thing too. Is and and then I will we'll probably start to wrap up the conversation. My trainer, I got a trainer in about four minutes. I got to run. Right. Uh, luckily, I have a like they. I have a training facility next door, and I'll kind of wrap that into the conversation. Is like, I, like even in the last twelve months, the things that I noticed that changed my health was. And like got me off meds because I was like freaking in the, the world of meds um, is uh, CBD uh, ketones. So exogenous ketones improve it, like changed my life. That's why I'm a believer uh, and exercise like, well, and clearly nutrition, but I thought my nutrition was dialed in anyways. But you know, the, the one thing I was always like about this stuff too is like, oh man, I'm going to have to hound all my patients. I'm going to have to hound all my family, you know, about this stuff. And that it was, that was never the case. Like, I mean, all it was is as soon as someone tried it, right? I mean, they were, they were indoctrined right in, like, it was like, it was the easiest thing. It was like, I've had people like, show me the science. I'm like, I don't care about the science. I'm a, I, I, I'm a result. Like there's science behind it, but I, I'm a result. Like I, ex, yeah. I've experienced it. So I don't really care about that. So um, anyways, here's, here, I'm going to put a call to action out there. Uh, cause otherwise my trainer is going to start messaging me soon and give me crap. So, um, anyone who's listening to the podcast today, here's, here's a couple things that you can do. So number one, you can actually go to the show notes. If you go to the show notes on your mobile right now, you can expand, open your show notes and there'll be a couple links there. One will be actually a link to uh, Facebook and you can either private message myself or Trent. If you have any questions, um, if you uh, also will notice there'll be some other links to uh, any resources that we discussed in the podcast today, uh, you can actually head to thechiropracticphilanthropist.com and you can listen to this entire episode if you're just tuning in now. 
uh, but you'll catch the entire episode and you can listen to it on your mobile. And again, you'll have access to all the links and resources provided by Dr. Trent today in our incredible conversation. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to ask you for one resource. And so I'm going to preface this. So one resource, and it's either like a book you're reading, um, a podcast you're listening to, um, something you watch that you think that every doctor right now listening should watch, listen, or read. Yeah, cool. So uh, we got this from the Oprah Winfrey podcast, um, which my wife just introduced me to recently. And uh, the book's called Conscious Parenting. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very and, nice. and, 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 and the concepts in that are very similar to some of the concepts we talked about earlier. Um, but it's coming from a, a perspective of being a parent. But it's the same shit, man. It's actually as a parent clearing away your own bullshit so you don't put that bullshit onto your, onto your children. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's going to be a, an amazing resource for, for, for docs to, to read. Whether you're a parent or not, I think it's got a huge, huge benefit. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much. I know it's probably early there in Australia, but I want to thank you so much for uh, sharing and giving back on the Chiropractic Philanthropist podcast today. Cool. Thanks for having me on Ed. And yeah, if anyone's got any questions about anything today and, uh, or if you're going through your own struggles, man, please uh, reach out. Um, you know, I, I, I'd love to just chat and whatever. And, uh, you know, we're also doing pretty, pretty cool things with Prove It as well. So if it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we can help out. And Dr. Ed and I work on this together. So um, we'd love to have you on the team because it's, it's life-changing stuff. So yeah. reach out to Dr. Ed and myself if you want to get any more info on the, the Prove It side of things. Um, or if you just want to chat and, um, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to hear, uh, hear stories and, and, you know, guide you in a direction if, if I can help and, you know, I can just offer either an ear or some advice if I've got any. Awesome. Thank you. Cool guys. Thanks, Dr. Ed. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done, but there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to thechiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on The Chiropractic Philanthropist.